Hi, everyone. Uh, in this video, we're going to run through the virtual titration lab. So here's the document. You're going to start with the pre-lab questions. These are mostly based on this uh, seven-minute video here. This was the Carolina video going through uh, the titration lab. So make sure you watch that. Um, some of them you'll need your textbook for, like for example, I don't think it actually mentions these terms in the video, or actually I'm pretty sure it mentions that point, but you might need your textbook to go over a couple of these as well. Uh, so once the pre-lab questions are done, here's where you're actually starting the lab. So you click here, and hopefully it'll open right up for you just like this. Um, the first time you try opening it, it might say click to enable flash, where you literally just click and it'll enable it. If you're having trouble enabling enabling flash, here's a YouTube video showing you how to do that. Uh, you may have to update your computer's flash. If you're having trouble getting the lab to load, please don't just email your teacher saying, it's not working, what can I do? take like a screenshot of exactly what you're seeing, exactly what error message it's giving you so we can help you troubleshoot. Um, okay, so here's the lab. So you're gonna follow the steps in the procedure, but basically we're gonna be doing strong acid versus strong base. We're gonna be filling the burette with base. You, number three, click out here. Our acid's gonna be HCl, our base is gonna be NaOH. See how it fills the burette now? So there's our NaOH in the base, uh, NaOH in the burette. For an indicator, we're going to use phenolphthalein. This is uh, the one that's clear in acid, and it's uh, that hot pink color in base. So with those four settings, we're ready to go. Now let's make sure we understand what we're doing in this titration. Now in this titration, it gives you, it basically means our acid is our known, because it gave us both pieces of information about the acid. It gave us the molarity, and it gave us the volume. The base, therefore, is our unknown. Now this is actually kind of the unconventional way of doing a uh, titration. In most of the titrations that we would be doing, or if you go into higher levels of science, you will be doing, generally your unknown goes in the flask down here and your known goes in the burette. They switch it up for this animation, but it's still totally fine. It doesn't matter which is which as long as you pay attention. So the, the idea is we know how much acid we have. We know the molarity of the acid. We uh, don't know the molarity of the base, that's the goal of this lab, which is going to go right here when you're done. And what we're going to figure out in the lab is the volume of base that needs to be added to this acid in order to um, perfectly cancel it out, to neutralize it, to, to reach what we call the equivalence point. So the basic idea is you have one of the molarities, you have one of the volumes, you figure out the second volume, and using that, you figure out the second molarity. Okay, uh, so what you wanted, the, the technique is you start by going slow, like one, two, or three milliliters at a time. And then once you approach the end point, the end point is when the uh, pH indicator changes color. Once you approach that, you have to really slow down and you have to go dropwise. If you keep adding too much all at once, you're going to overshoot the end point. Here's what that's going to look like. So let's say um, we drag this up to add four milliliters, okay? Now what you wanna do is when you, you can click and hold this and you, you're allowed to move this all up and down, it's not actually adding anything until you release your finger and click. So this allows you to like micromanage your actual amount. Now once I added four, notice I can't go lower than four. You've, you've committed to four, you can't go lower. So let's say I, I'm, I'm doing this incorrectly and I'm gonna add big chunks at a time. So let me drop it there, that's another four and a half. And what you do is when you release it, notice you get blue liquid that drops out of the burette and hits this. Now, I'm gonna do one more and I want you to look here at the flask and tell me if you see any color at all. I'm gonna drop another big amount. Now look at the flask. Do you see how nothing, there was no color? That means we're not even close. So let me add another big chunk again. This is not the way you want to do it. I'm going to add like five. Ooh, I actually got really lucky. I happened to hit it right where we would want to stop anyway. But let me just demonstrate. If you, if you hopefully notice a small flash of pink, that's your, um, your, in, your uh, indicator. 
uh, no pun intended, that's, that tells you you want to hit dropwise from now on. But let's say you did that wrong and you just add another chunk like this. See that? We overshot the endpoint. If you see that solid hot pink color, that means you, you did it wrong and you're going to have to redo this trial. Uh, this happens, by the way, all the time in an actual lab. So, um, and yeah, you, you can't just like reset and then keep the same data because this program randomizes the molarity. So what you have to do is hit reset. And I notice it kind of glitched out. And sometimes when I reset it and redid this, like we'll go this, 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 and this. Sometimes it didn't allow me to actually add any base. Let's see if it does it this time. Actually, this is okay. But you, if it doesn't allow you to move this, if it kind of bugs out, just refresh it. So let me show you the right way to do it. We want to go in like one, two, or three milliliter increments at a time, paying very close attention to the flask. And as soon as you see that flash of pink, that's when you stop adding big chunks and you switch to dropwise. All right. So here's two. And that's about four. And again, like what I'm doing is I'm looking at the number above here. You see how it says 6.5, but I'm still holding it. Now I'm going to shift my eyes down to the flask. And when I release it, I'm going to look for color. So I'm looking at, at the spinning thing right now. I'm looking at the flask. Okay, nothing. Here's a little bit more. And a little bit more. Again, I'm, I'm looking at the number. So I, I was at 11. Now I'm going to go to like 12, 13, or 14. So here's 13. Now I'm going to switch my attention down to the spinning thing. Okay, no color. Let me go to like 15 or so. 15. No color. Let me go to around 17. Oh, see that? Little flash of pink. So as soon as you first see that little flash of pink, that means you're starting to approach your endpoint. And now we switch to dropwise. So I'm going to click this button and add one drop at a time. And as long as it keeps flashing pink but then fading back to clear, you keep adding it. Now you see what's happening up here? It's adding 0.02 milliliters every time you add a drop. Now this, I almost wish it didn't show this now because it kind of makes it confusing. We haven't added 17.5, we've added the full 17.74. So I'm again now looking at the color and I need to get it to the point where it stays pink. Now I've done this lab a bunch of times in preparing this. You have a three drop window where it stays pink for three drops, which by the way is more generous than real life. In real life, you usually have one drop and we see people overshoot it all the time and have to restart the lab. And if you have to actually restart the lab in person, it's usually about 10 minutes of cleaning and measuring. All right, so again, I'm looking for the pink color to stay and I'm not going too fast because like it's almost like a reflex thing because when as soon as that drop hits it, if it stays pink, I need to stop. And sometimes this takes longer than other times. It kind of depends on where you happened to move it initially. Oh, see that? It stayed pink. And I actually, I did an extra drop, but you're allowed that three drop window. So here's where you stop. And here's where we're going to take our second data point. Well, third, I guess, if you consider the molarity of the acid and the volume of the acid should have already been recorded. I hopefully didn't, I think I forgot to mention that, but well, you could even do it now. It doesn't matter. So in your data table, you record the molarity of the known acid, the volume of the known acid, and now you're going to record the volume of the base that was added. It's this number, not this number. I almost wish this weren't here because it kind of messes it up. All right. So you now perform the calculations. Make sure you show all your work in the calculations section of the document. Uh, if you're unsure of how to do the calculations, make sure you review the textbook or the other uh, video. It's uh, pretty straightforward, especially since this is a like a one-to-one -one where it's your base has one hydroxide, your acid has one H. You can actually use that formula I went through. 
Okay, so once you get your answer and once you put all the work in your document, you're gonna test it. So I'm not gonna do the work here, but let's imagine we could go like 0.219. You hit okay. Okay, I swear it randomizes and I literally just made this number up and it happened to work. I don't know what the actual window of success is, but uh, okay, so let's say you didn't do it. Let's say you said like 0.252 and you hit correct. By the way, it does randomize it. Don't put 219. All right, see how this is incorrect? All right, uh, if you get it wrong, you're gonna do it until you get it right. And if you're still unable to get it, just you know, hop into Zoom, talk to your teacher. So let me put it back to what I happened to get before, 0.209. Was it 0.219? I'm curious what the, the little, the window it gives you of success. Let me try 0.22, that's correct, 0.23. Anyway, so you do this until you get it correct. Now you're almost ready for your screenshot. We have our, um, a faint pink endpoint color, which is what we want. We have our correct answer, which is what we want. And we need one more thing, which is your name that acts as the proof. So in the next Google tab, put your name. These people are, you do your name. Oh, it's my video. And you go back here and your screenshot now needs to include this tab, just so we know that it's you doing it. Uh, so your screenshot, you can either take a picture with your cell phone or do like a print screen thing, but you need to show three things. Your tab, your correct answer showing up as correct, because it'd be way too much work for us to actually mathematically calculate everyone's three trials and check your answer. You know, the program does it for you. So you need to have this with the correct. You have your, have your name and you need your paint, faint pink color here. If you accidentally overshoot it, which by the way, remember I said you have a three drop grace window. I did two drops, one more drop, I think I'm still okay. One more drop, I think I'm over. Yeah, so if you accidentally go over, this screenshot wouldn't get you credit for that trial you, you would have to redo it so be very careful uh, odds are again you will probably overshoot it on your first trial or two it happens a lot it happened to me a lot hopefully not with this video so take your time and basically once you're done with this you're going to do trials two and three now uh once you get it once it's pretty quick to get it a second time so you can either just refresh the entire window i would just do that or you can hit reset but sometimes it does kind of glitch out so in terms of what you're turning in, make sure your pre-lab questions are done. Um, make sure your data table's filled in. So this is the molarity of the acid, the volume of the acid. These are the knowns at the start of the lab. The volume of base added at the end point, that's um, like when, when you successfully get the end point, that's what you enter. And then you do your calculations here. Make sure your work is shown. Then your work, uh, your final answer goes here. And your three screenshots are going to go here. So if you have any questions about this, please hop in Zoom. Uh, that's it. Good luck.